Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are exploring a lot about what is testing all about in details and helping you build a better career on QI. We are currently in the chapter one talking about the basics of software testing and as a part of it we are still getting continued with 1.1 what is testing and this is the part three of this particular segment. To talk about this today, we are jumping into the other part of it where a lot of people have a great confusion to understand that when it comes to types of testing, what should I say, All right? Now, of course, a lot of people will come up and say, oh, types of testing looks like manual and automation. People will say white box or black box. People would sometimes also say functional and non-functional, but very rarely people respond to my question on this that it is static and dynamic. Right, this is to clarify you today that the types of testing, when you say what are the types of testing, the answer is static and dynamic. Whereas all other items are differently arranged under these two items itself. No matter you talk about white box testing, you talk about black box, functional, non-functional, retesting, regression testing, and many more things. We'll be talking about them in detail in our chapter two. But right now, let's elaborate more on what is static testing and dynamic testing. When it comes to static testing on your left, it's all about reviewing various work products which are prepared as a part of the entire software development lifecycle. Now, what are these work products? Work products are basically important to understand that it is any kind of documentation, any kind of reference, any kind of diagrams which is created as a part of the project and needs to be reviewed, of course, for any kind of anomalies, contradictions, omissions, inconsistency, inconsistencies, contradictions, etc. Right? So any particular such uh, work product, which is any document and reference, for example, it could be a requirement, it could be a design, it could be a business model, or it could be any kind of UML diagram, right? Use cases, any such thing, be it a test case, test plan as well is a candidate of static testing. Now, static testing is performed as reviews, the approach of conducting static testing. And the reason we call it as static testing is because it is non-executable, okay? It's, a, it's just a process where we don't run any code or do not have an application as such, which we actually execute and test it. So we don't have any kind of practical executions involved when we talk about static testing. It is limited to hardcore documentations. To a certain extent, we do code review as well, but not about executing the code, but doing a dry run. Doing a scenario or dry run execution, which is more of like reviewing what is that we have written is up to the mark or not. Now, there are several types of reviews which we'll be covering in our upcoming chapters, talking about the uh, types of review like informal review, walkthrough, technical review, inspection, etc. And on the other hand, the right side, we have the second type of testing, which is dynamic testing. And the major difference between static and dynamic is static is non-executable and dynamic is executable. Here we have a code, we have a product and which we run, interact with it and test. It. We validate the functionalities by interacting with the product while passing on some values, running the application, executing the code and then testing it. So that's completely different than the static testing. And of course, dynamic testing takes place after static testing, right? And this dynamic testing is performed as levels of testing. We don't call it as types, we call it as levels of testing. And the several levels which you might be aware of is unit, integration, system, acceptance, or any other non-functional levels like performance, security, uh, usability, accessibility, and a lot many other things like that. And we know them as levels of testing. Now further to add, a level of testing can be classified into two categories, which is functional or non-functional. That's where your performance and other non-functional items falls under dynamic testing. So this is again on the high level, we'll be doing a deep dive into the chapter two about what are these levels and how they are differentiated on terms of functional and non-functionality. Also to add, this particular thing is basically referred to as uh, verification and validation also, which is a very common question for the newcomers to the industry. They 
lot of company look forward to ask you this question that how do you differentiate between verification and validation right so the left side is what you call it as verification where we don't have any kind of executions involved and on the right side dynamic testing is also referred to as validation but is that enough to answer no let's talk about in detail that what is verification and validation well in simple terms to define the verification and validation uh, we can use some great statements which you always find in any tutorial any block spots or if any tutor is teaching you about testing they will use this statement that have we built the product right or have we built the right product right the only difference in these two statements is at the end that is product right right product when you swap these two words the meaning changes it's just simple that have you built the product right that means whatever you have built is it working fine or not like if i'm writing a program to add two numbers I'll pass two values or I'll review it and check that is it an addition program if I have to write a program the expectation is to write a program to multiply two numbers then I'll do a dry run and check if it is exactly what you need right and validation is more of like right product where we want to make sure that this is what the customer wanted no matter your addition program is working fine but did the client really ask you for addition or subtraction or multiplication? So validating with respect to those of the requirements given to you is the validation part. So verification is just making sure that what you are doing, what you have done so far, is that correct or not? And validation is more about making sure that this is what the customer wanted because not always the right product can be, uh, sorry, the product right can be the right product. For example, if you go to a shop and you say, hey, I'm looking for an Apple iPhone and that shopkeeper starts showing you Samsung models. So Samsung model is also working phone. It's a phone, right? But you're not looking for Android. You're looking for iOS. So verification passed, validation failed, right? So being precise to the requirement is what we validate as a part of the validation. Verification is more of making sure that whatever we are building up, like the left side of the V model, right? We say uh, business requirements, uh, HLD, LLD, code, all these things, what we prepare internally is up to the mark or not, correct? So also adding more to it, we have got some quick differences for you to build your confidence on differentiating between verification and validation. So verification, it includes checking documentations, design, codes, and program statically. We don't talk about running them, executing them, etc. On the other hand, validation includes testing and validating the actual product, which is not just limited to work products, but this is the real product which you might be releasing into the market. Verification is also known as static testing or the approach is static testing, whereas dynamic testing is all about the validation. The methods used in verifications are review, walkthrough inspections, etc and methods used in validations are white box, black box, functional, non-functional, and more. It can, on the verification side, it can find the bugs early in the uh, stages of the software development lifecycle, like development, design, requirement phases, because fixing or finding a defect early is cheaper to resolve, right? Because you have not built a system on that basis. So it's, it always helps you to find defects earlier in the lifecycle. Whereas on the validation, it can only find the bugs that could not be found by the verification. That means by interacting with the system, you would be validating and getting the defects there. And here you will find more early defects on the work products. So the defects will be there in both the places. It's just that related to work products and verification and related to real product on the validation. It checks whether the software conforms to the specification or not. And validation is checks whether the software meets the requirement and expectation of a customer or not. So pretty much making the same statements which we just discussed. And finally, it does not include the execution of code, which is verification, whereas validation deals with execution of the code, practically interacting with it. Now, I hope that certainly gives us a great understanding of some of the basic terminologies, uh, good understanding of what are the fundamentals of testing, uh, what are the objectives of testing, and so on. We'll be now jumping into something more interesting in our next tutorial, which is to talk about why testing is important. 
So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.